Hey, thank you very much, Gary. I appreciate it. It is 7.05 now on this Wednesday morning. It is the 28th day of August, 2024. And I'm John Reed. Glad you are with us here on News Radio WRVA. So I don't know about you, when I see a new indictment, or, or I guess a prison sentence now for four years for the first guy to go into the Capitol on January 6th. Now, how many years ago was that? Three and a half years ago that that uh, the incident at the Capitol that lasted for a couple of hours um, occurred. And they're just getting around to sentencing this guy to four years. And it just it's on the TV now. So we get to see the video of January 6th. I am so sick and tired of the manipulation from the national press. Uh, I, where's the story? about the 100 nights of riots and attacks on cops, burning buses, burning cars, burning buildings, smashed windows, dead people, innocent people attacked during the riots of 2020. And how Kamala Harris and her friends raised money to bail out the rioters because we had some sort of um, justice coming uh, to to you know make up for hundreds of years of racial abuse in America. So everybody today is supposed to suffer from illegality and rioting to make up for things that happened decades, if not centuries ago. You you, you see in that video? I don't think so. And the indictment against Trump yesterday all ginned up to try to influence this election. Now, I don't think people are stupid. I really don't. I think people have got to see that this is coordinated, that the timing of this is not random. It's designed to influence you as you head towards election day to think that Trump is the person who brings chaos to the country. You know, the drama and the chaos that occurred during the Trump years was because Democrats created that drama and chaos. They refused. Remember the resistance within the bureaucracy? They refused to obey the law. They refused to do their jobs in Washington the way they would under any other president. The Democrats who were working in Washington at the time and the people who live in Washington decided they were going to make it a total mess and make it hell for anybody who dared work for Donald Trump. And in large part, they were successful. Look what we've gotten for the last uh, four years. The good thing is you can fix it. You can fix it. Now, how are people seeing all of this? And is it changing some votes? And is it changing some minds? And especially in the minority community, it sounds like anecdotally, and there's some polling data that indicates that Some black voters are saying, hey, enough of this. So when I was in Chesapeake, I met a number of voters who were, I don't know how you put it, non-traditional Republican voters who who are on board with Donald Trump. Darnella Moore is from Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, I think exactly. Darnella is with us this morning. Darnella, I appreciate you coming on. It must be tough when you walk into certain rooms and say that you're a Trump supporter. You're wearing that red hat. What What is your uh, take on things as we head towards Election Day this year? And good morning to you. Good morning, John, and your awesome audience. Thank you so much for having me this morning. As President Trump, I am one tough cookie because yeah. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, the same state as President Trump. And as soon as he came down those golden escalators, I was on board to support him. I was so excited that a non-politician was going to be in our White House. And I had no doubt about it. Well, what is it that's appealing about him being a non-politician? And why are you so down on other politicians? I think I know, but I want to let you tell me. Well, there are several reasons, but the main reason, John, is because I've been working my entire legal administration career in Washington, D.C. I've been involved with big law in politics uh, in our nation's capital, and I've seen the government mess. I've 
experienced the political corruption. And I, as are many voters, particularly in the minority community, are not happy about the social direction that our country was going. And we wanted a change, and we voted for a change in 2016. We also voted for a change in 2020. And we know President Trump won all elections, but I'll diverse. So I'll you're convinced from that. We won't touch that. You're convinced that there is some shadiness going on here. Absolutely. With the indictments with President Trump, I'm sad to say, in our home state of New York, which is predominantly Democratic, all of these indictments are politically motivated, in addition to the ones in Georgia, in Florida. They are trying to stop President Trump. And I know, like me, most Americans are knowledgeable and intelligent enough to see that, wow, there's something to this. Mm-hmm. Why is the establishment on both sides trying to stop President Trump again, who is not a part of their party play to get along? He's a businessman. He came in the White House in 2016 as a businessman and implement, implemented some of those economic policies that had all of us winning, that had all of us not struggling to put food on the table for our families and gas in the car to get to work. So do you think that that message resonates with African-American voters in the United States that have traditionally voted for the Democrat Party? Is it an economic message? Is it a social message? What What is so appealing about Trump compared to Kamala Harris, who presents herself? I mean, I guess it's I, I, I guess everybody's blended these days, but she presents herself as a black woman. Doesn't doesn't that appeal to black voters that they could make history with her? John, if you look at the, the statistics now, the number of black voters that are supporting President Trump in this current election season has increased over 50 percent, particularly with the black men. Black men are supporting President Trump like never before. And I believe the reason for that is because of what he's going through judicially. I, as a black woman, believe me, when I supported President Trump in 2015, I received a lot of kickback, a lot of flack in my community, Mm -hmm. in my family. But one thing about me, how my mom raised me, was not to be a follower but a leader. And most blacks were raised, vote Democrat, because it was perceived that the Democratic political party was the one that most championed our unique social and community causes. But as an adult, I began to do the research for myself. As an adult, again, I worked in our nation's capital in the midst of the political and legal uh, happenings. And I began to see for myself, wait a minute, the Democratic Party of my parents' lifetime is not what it is now. So I got off the Democrat Democrat plantation and I've never looked back. And I'm happy to say that back then I felt like I was on a solo island, but now I am surrounded by and speaking with and meeting other black supporters unlike ever before. And I tell you, to include the women, black women, These are the issues that are driving us to President Trump. Economic empowerment, educational empowerment, community engagement. engagement. John, what other presidential candidate do you know that have campaigned in Bronx, New York, have campaigned in Detroit? That's right. He's been all over the place in in spots that... The advisors probably tell him not to do it. 
He is the only candidate that has ever come to our community and not only engaged us during uh, election time to campaign, but once he was elected in the White House by enacting change in principles and initiatives that were a blessing to our community. If you were in the room with Donald Trump and his senior campaign advisors, knowing how things are set up in America with the media, how would you advise him over the course of the next, let's say, six weeks while he's trying to galvanize political support from all different groups? How would you advise him to campaign? Because it sounds like the national press is going to try to continue to stomp on it. John, with all due respect, it's not President Trump that needs to make a change. He's doing excellent. Mm -hmm. He is real. He gives the American people himself. And that's what we want to see. Again, whether you're the white community, the black community, we all bleed red. And we want and need the same things for our families and for our communities. So I wouldn't advise President Trump to change anything. He is already engaging all communities again. And I'm so excited that he is engaging my phenomenal black community. But I would advise the national press to begin to tell the truth, to begin to show what's real. And the truth is President Donald J. Trump has been the best president of our lifetime that had the most economic boost, the least unemployment rate, and hardly to any illegal immigration crossing our borders. That, by the way, John, as you know, affect the minority community the most. Yeah. Well, here's my advice to Donald Trump. He needs to get you up on the stage with him <laughs> to, to help tell that story, buy you a plane ticket, to send you all over the country because you have a story to tell, and it's a compelling one. Darnella Moore uh, from down in Virginia Beach, I appreciate the chance to talk to you. And let's stay in touch as we head towards you know, early voting in Virginia on September 20th and Election Day on November 5th. Thank you, Darnella. Thank you, John. Have a great day. Yes, ma'am. It is 717. We're back with.